Okay guys, just going to do a quick video on smuggling and poaching. Um, before I talk about social crimes, which is really important for this topic, I'm just going to quickly go through the factors that you would um, be linked to this topic. Um, so obviously money and poverty is, is, is going to be a huge one. Um, people are going to be smuggling and are going to be poaching because um, they need to make money, they need to live, um, and they don't necessarily see it as a bad way to, to live their life. Um, people's attitudes, you've got the attitudes of the poor, or the attitudes of the people who are committing the crimes, they see it as a social crime, they don't see it particularly as such a bad thing or as a crime themselves, and then you've got the attitudes of the government and the role of the government in making laws and legislation, and really what we're talking about there is rich people and their desire to protect their wealth and their property from the poor, okay, so there's your factors, and um, what I'll talk about now is what a social crime is, um, I want to make this crystal clear, um, in the period we're looking at for smuggling and poaching, so we're talking about the 1750s, the 1800s, um, social crimes are challenges to the social order of the government or society. So what that means is that these are people who look at the rich and they look at the government and think, well, sod them. I, I, I want cheap tobacco or I want to sell deers and hares, um, deer and hares and rabbits to, to the local butcher and make some money. They, they don't see the things that they're doing necessarily as a crime. They might know it's slightly wrong, but they think, well, I'm poor. You know, why should I live by the, the, the laws of the government? So we're talking about things like smuggling, poaching, tax evasion, trespassing. You could even say highway robbery um, because poor people are not going to be the victims of highway robbery. It's going to be rich people um, and those people who've got something to lose. Um, quite often on the exam, you see this question and the questions are revolving around social crimes. Um, as comparing to today. So you need to be prepared in the exam to talk about smuggling and poaching um, and those kind of things and highway robbery in the, um, the late 1600s, the 1700s and the early 1800s. You need to be able to talk about that and then you need to be able to think about social crimes by today's standards or you need to be able to think about comparing um, poaching and smuggling to today. So um, the, the last mark had a really good example of that on. So if you can do that, that's really good. Now, sm smuggling, really simply, is bringing in goods without paying tax. Okay. So if you buy something abroad and you bring it into the country without declaring it, technically you've smuggled it because you, know, you might have had to pay tax on it. In the, in the 1700s and 1800s, we're talking about things like expensive materials like velvet and silk, um, which could be bought cheaper in France, uh, tobacco, tea, brandy, those kind of things. Now, when we think about smuggling, it's always good to think about today and how things changed. So what do people smuggle today? Well, they still smuggle tobacco, they still smuggle alcohol. However, a big change is that people now smuggle drugs and actually people. All right? People smuggling is a, is a huge criminal offence. And it's not a social crime, but um, it, it, does still ha it, it, you know, it does happen. Okay? Now, between the period 1740 to 1850, there was a huge increase in smuggling. And the increase in smuggling is because the government were putting too much taxes on things. So, as a rough ballpark, things were basically taxed at around 30%. So you were paying a third more than you needed to for your brandy and your cigarettes and your silk or whatever you were bringing in. And the reason why smuggling happened is that there was no no force in place that could stop them. Um, custom officials and patrols that were set up to stop smugglers, they couldn't patrol the whole coast of England. Um, and we're talking mainly the southeast here, but even still, they, they couldn't do it. They didn't have the manpower, they didn't have the technology to do it. So smugglers could quite easily wait till 2 o'clock in the morning, land the boat in a little tiny cove, get the brandy or the tobacco off, the local population would be more than willing to help out, and um, I'll talk about why. Okay, so why did people smuggle? Well, put simply, most of the people smuggling or being involved in smuggling, especially when it came to loading the, the um, smuggled materials off the boats, were farm labourers and they were paid a really bad wage. They were poor and they could earn six or seven times a day's wage by smuggling. On the flip side, people got cheap goods and no one's going to turn away things at a cheaper price. So if you buy your tobacco, if you can get it at two thirds of the price you normally pay, you're going to do that. okay? And you're not going to ask questions and you're not going to be oh, I can't do it because I'm not paying my taxes, okay? People are going to want those things. Ironically, wealthy people also got involved in smuggling. Um, and actually, uh, Robert Walpole, who later became a prime minister, he smuggled wine into the country while he was a government minister using a government ship. So, 
This is the ironic thing. These laws are here to protect the rich, and actually, at the end of the day, the rich were involved in it too. Okay, so the key thing about smuggling is that not many people saw it as a crime, and lots of people got involved in it because they could make a few quid, they could, you know, make a little profit, and at the end of the day, they got cheap, cheap items. Poaching is where you go onto someone's land and you kill animals that don't belong to you. Now, this is where we come back to our factors because people who were rich, landowners who owned land over £100, could poach. They could go onto land and they could go and shoot animals. They didn't need permission. But poor people couldn't do this, so you've got the unfairness. Poor people traditionally had always had the um, ability to go and hunt on land. Um, although from the forest laws in the Norman times, this got this got stopped more and more. But traditionally, this wasn't really policed. This wasn't really stopped. You know, in the 1400s, you could go out and maybe shoot a few rabbits. And this law is clearly here under the bloody code to protect rich people. Um, poachers were mainly poor and they hunted to provide food for their families. However, some poachers did make a lot of money from poaching. Um, and, you know, people would order certain types of games, certain types of bird, um, hares or rabbits or, or deer to be poached. Um, and they could make a lot of money from it. And at the end of the day, the rich people wanted to stop this because this was their land. They owned it. They had the right to hunt on it. No one else did. The fact that poor people were going onto the land and hunting really, really angered the, the ruling class and the government. And they saw it as a serious threat because, you know, what if all the poor people suddenly decided to do it? A key piece of legislation that I really want you to remember for this is the Black Act. Okay, so the Black Act in 1723, it was brought in uh, initially to stop a group of poachers called the Blacks. And it, this, this law is an anti-poaching law. And what it says is if you're hunting deer, rabbits or hares... And you get caught, and you and you you know you haven't got permission. You're poaching. It's a capital crime under the bloody code. You'll be executed, probably transported. It also said that anyone with a blackened face, so that means people that are disguising themselves at night, so they can't be easily seen, and is on you know land that they shouldn't be on, or is you know around a situation where they could be arrested for poaching, can be executed as well. Okay, so it's a really really strict um, bloody code law that says that, you know, we are going to treat smuggling as a capital crime, okay? Now, obviously, you think about today's laws for poaching, I'm pretty sure you probably just get a police caution. So there's a huge change there if you're thinking about answering a question on this. Okay, so, hopefully, that isn't smuggling and poaching everything you need to know, but it's a nice little overview for you. And remember, if you're answering a question on uh, poaching, you need to get the Black Act 1723 into your answer.